It's time once again for the Maple Grove City Report. I'm Dave Kaiser. Thanks for joining us along with Heidi Nelson, Maple Grove City Administrator. Welcome once again. Thank you. We have a meeting from the 8th to talk about. Lots of items there. Also some updates from the city. A lot happening. But before both of those elements, let's talk about the work session that mm -hmm. happened. We've talked many times about the CARES dollars. Yeah. You have now some more information and some action that's being taken. Give us a little recap of that. Yeah, so we wanted to kind of visit with the council about the allocation of our CARES funds. Maple Grove received just over $5 million um, from the state, and that was, of course, federal funds that were passed down through the state for the purpose of covering our COVID-related expenses. Um, so we have been, of course, tracking those expenses right from the beginning in March, um, and then documenting kind of staff time associated with managing the COVID pandemic. So we kind of have a good accounting of where we're at today and where we think we'll be. These funds um, need to be expended by November 15th to meet um, the federal treasury guidelines so we've we've done some you know predictions about what sure. what additional costs we might have and then we do have some additional dollars that we can um, under the federal guidance we can allocate out to other organizations for specific purposes um, so those are really focused around food supports for the community housing mm -hmm. supports for the community um, we can assist Maple Grove Hospital in cover covering some of their COVID related expenses and then of course we've done two rounds of assistance to the business community and so right. we're looking at um, another round there. So the council talked about um, making an allocation to Cross Services, which mm -hmm. is an organization that serves Maple Grove for um, both food shelf, but they also have um, a peace of mind fund that deals with housing. Um, so pay helping people with rent or mortgage payments, that kind of a thing, um, to keep people in their housing, prevent homelessness. Um, and then um, some contribution to the Maple Grove Hospital that would help cover some of their expenses and then doing another round of business assistance, but this time opening up um, the requirements a little bit um, to cover those businesses that maybe weren't required to be shut down by the federal, or I'm sorry, by the governor's um, orders, mm -hmm. but had certainly negative financial impacts due to the pandemic. So these items will come back before the council on September 21st. Um, we'll have to do some agreements with those organizations and um, get those things formalized so they'll come back to the council on the 21st for action. Very good. Also in the same discussion was park and recreation mm -hmm. and somewhat tied to the CARES funding as well. Yeah. Unravel that for us a little bit and tell us what you've been watching in that area. Yeah, so, you know, parks and recreation is really an area that's been really impacted greatly from a loss of revenue. Mm -hmm. um, the CARES dollars can't be used for lost revenue for, for local governments. They're really just really focused on those expenses and then those, those issues out in the community that I spoke of. So um, we have been tracking those lost revenues and kind of understanding what that means to our operations. Um, we reopened, of course, the community center in late June and and restarted some you know a more expanded programming offering in into the late summer months and so now we have a couple months under our belt of that so we were able to kind of you know look at those um, those projections and see how they're they're faring here in terms of, of revenue um, one area is interesting we're, we're doing great on ice rentals a lot of the hockey associations okay. are back in full swing mm -hmm. um, and we think that that'll continue um, through in the fall and into the winter months so um, just monitoring that, giving the council an update on where those things are. Um, we continue to make tweaks to that operation to try to address those revenue losses. But yeah, that's an area of our, our city operations and, and every city's facing that. That's really uh, put a pinch on the revenue for those those areas. It's a department that's been very creative. We'll talk yes. later about some of the upcoming events they have that have some interesting names and uh, some fun for the community. So that was the work session on the 8th. Again, the meeting was on the 8th due to the holiday. The meeting itself was an hour and 23 minutes. Not Nothing from consent that was pulled. So we go to special business and the first item, people will know this name, <laughs> Deb Syrie in yeah. the city of Maple Grove and all her involvement and she was recognized. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about Deb and the parting of Deb from MGCO. Yeah, so Deb um, has stepped away from her role with MGCO after um, many years. Eight, she's been with MGCO for 20 years, 18 years as president and of course, um, always ever present at Maple yeah. Grove Days and the various events that MGCO puts on throughout the year in the community. So just some interesting um, statistics. Um, when she, 
In 2003, the, the event cost associated with Maple Grove Days was about $4,000. Um, in 2019, it was $133,000. Wow. So, um, you know, just to show kind of the magnitude yeah. of the event and, and the coordination that's required um, for those folks that put that event on. But important for the council to take a moment to thank Deb for her service and recognize her contributions to the community. Her and her husband, Rick, have lived in Maple Grove since 1979, raised their three children here. Um, and then Deb, of course, is also a member of our park board and, and long serving there as well. So um, Chuck Stifter, our Parks and Recreation Director, was there to provide comments. Bill Lewis, our park board chair, and then members of the council also contributed to this recognition. So we want to thank Deb for her service yeah. and, and congratulate her on this next um, chapter of her life and taking a little bit of a time out for herself and her family. Yeah, always a pleasure for us to work with as well. Deb, best of luck. Moving ahead, a great award coming into the city for Fernbrook Fields. Yes. Tell us a little bit about the organization behind this and the award itself. Yeah, so this is on behalf of the Minnesota Recreation and Park Association, and this was their award of excellence for the Fernbrook Fields project. So every year they solicit um, entries into their awards program and they look at the various um, parts of the facility and how the program, uh, the project was put together. And um, Maple Grove has been rec recognized several times by MRPA for both both um, the Town Green and the Central Park project as well. So mm -hmm. Fernbrook Fields, another high quality um, gem of a project for Maple Grove. So nice to have this recognition from MRPA. Congratulations to the city. Next item was the update of COVID-19 from the fire chief, Tim Bush. Any items that stood out this time? Again, I know the city is following it very yeah, closely. Yeah, we just continue to follow along um, with the numbers. It seems like we're kind of in this holding period right now. Things haven't shifted a whole lot in recent weeks in terms of whether it's cases or um, death rate, that kind of a thing. So we're continuing on in our operations. Of course, we have elections coming up here, which also, you know, getting into the absentee voting period. So that brings another layer layer of uh, management in the COVID era for mm -hmm. us. So mm -hmm. um, we'll continue to monitor those things going forward. Very good. Next item was a public hearing related to a new restaurant coming to town. Tell us a little bit about that restaurant and the license they were looking to get. Yeah, so this is the Great Greek and they be, they were um, going to be opening at 76 7860 Main Street, and this is in the former Pyology space. Um, they were in front of the council for an on-sale wine and 3-2 malt liquor license, so beer and wine for them. Um, they, um, this is the first franchise of this um, restaurant in the state of Minnesota, so they're excited to be coming to Main Street in Maple Grove. And um, Joan Myers, one of their one of their owners, was there with us um, to provide some information. It's really a Mediterranean grill. She left behind a couple menus. They looked very good, so we're excited about that. And they look to be opening later in October. Welcome to the new business. Public hearing held that evening as well about an easement vacation. Mm -hmm. I understand a procedural type of process has had to deal with the village of Arbor Lakes. Yeah, so this is really kind of dealing with the housing, the senior housing that's going in there and sort of vacating some of the old easements and, re and the new plat will dedicate new ones. So just a procedural process in, in the steps for that project. All right, again, moving ahead on the meeting from the 8th, now going ahead to community development items, something that was tabled in a past meeting mm -hmm. comes back now is Cook Lake Maple Grove residential plan. Mm -hmm. Tell us about some of the changes here and what the council decided. Yeah, so this is an area kind of 101 Bass Lake Road, just south and west of Lord of Life Church there, um, just due west of the New Havenwood Senior Housing Project. Okay. Um, so this had been in front of the council before uh, with a with another developer, and this um, is the Excelsior Group bringing this one forward. Um, previously, this had 42 single family homes. Um, this proposal was for 58, so it increased the unit count a bit. A little bit um, different of a model and similar to Mills Creek. It's a project, if you're familiar, right up off of Forest View. Mm -hmm. So this would be kind of a small lot, single family, but a rental type project. And so we've heard a lot about these projects around the Metro, very popular. Um, the Mills Creek project um, has been full occupancy since wow. its opening. Um, so I think this um, really has a place in the market and, and it's kind of constructed in a way that if some point in the future they want to sell off the units, um, they certainly can do so. But it'll start out as a rental, single family home rental project. Very good. Yep. Also in community development, some talk about the shops at Arbor Lakes. 
two things, really an update of some of the business mm -hmm. movement there, but also signage, talking about signage, and I understand this deals with the transit building. Yeah, so we've been working with the shops. Um, they had some goals around trying to increase some of their visibility from the freeway, and um, they're a partner with us in that transit ramp. They contribute to, to its operating um, costs on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. um, they help with some of the, the ongoing maintenance there, and so it's kind of an offsetting parking use. Um, you know, our transit use mm -hmm. is primarily during the business day. They're shopping and entertainment use is primarily in the evening so it's it's a nice um, shared parking structure um, so this would add some signage um, for the shops at Arbor Lakes to that parking structure let's talk a little bit about some of the businesses as well they had mm -hmm. some updates there and it sounds like businesses new ones seem to yeah. keep looking at the facility and coming in yeah they've got I think four new tenants Fox Run um, they've got a co-working space coming there oh. um, Shake Shack had been in front of the council previous you know last mm -hmm. winter prior mm -hmm. to the pandemic um, to come forward I think they're gonna be back in front of us looking at some drive-through space which I think a lot of our a restaurants trend. are gonna be mm -hmm. um, looking to either add or increase the that um, so yeah things are you know continuing to move along for the shops very good go to their website certainly to find out more about some of the business activity there apex facilities we've talked about this before mm -hmm. and if you recall this relates to lighting and energy saving within the city what's yes. this next step that's being taken yeah so this was just an amendment to that agreement with apex um, we needed to make some changes to the lighting um, spec for the dome um, so we needed a little bit more um, brighter lighting, up lighting in the dome that had originally been specced for this project. So this was an amendment to that and kind of an exciting time for the dome over the summer months. The turf was replaced out there in a, in a cooperative agreement with the school district. Um, they're doing some work on the, the HVAC for that facility, which has been struggling a bit. And now when the dome goes back up in November, it'll have new lighting. And so nice. I think it'll feel like a, a refurbished dome or yes. renovated dome um, and for better experience for the users. Residents, you'll have to stop by and check it out. Final note related to community development, so update on some things that are coming up. One is a work session coming up later in September about the tree preservation ordinance. What will be talked about here? Yeah, so the tree preservation ordinance, we've been working on that back at the time. We also worked on the shoreland uh, right. or ordinance uh, a while back, and so this one got tabled. Uh, so it's coming back to the, the council wanted to just kind of be uh, updated on where we're at with that. So we'll have some discussion um, with the council about the tree preservation ordinance. And that is September 21st. Then. Mm -hmm. Coming up on the 28th, the next Planning Commission meeting, yep. talk about Project 100. So that it, continues to move along. Yeah, and um, so Planning Commission canceled for the 14th, uh, come back on the 28th. They do have a variance request, and then um, some elements of the housing pieces of Project 100 continue to move forward. We've talked quite a bit about small businesses throughout the program today and over the weeks, and there is a big week coming up for yeah. small businesses, the week of the 21st. What is that? Yeah, National Small Business Week, uh, the week of September 21st. So we just encourage everybody to get out and support their small businesses in Maple Grove I think now more than ever it's very important and a final note given from community development was about the Met Council <coughs> some discussion going on here give us a little refresher we've talked about this before as well yeah so this was a recent governor's order to, to look at um, the Met Council they're doing kind of this blue ribbon study they've appointed a, uh, um, a committee of um, local elected and appointed officials and they're going to be looking at issues about you know, Met Council structure, governance, those kinds of things, but they're also going to be taking a look at transit. And so, you know, we're certainly interested in that as a suburban transit provider. We want to keep an eye on that. So we'll be monitoring this as it goes forward, and you'll probably hear um, future updates given to the council on this item as well. Moving ahead on September 8th's agenda, Public Works engineering update, and of course, it had to do with I-94. How yeah. are we doing on the <laughs> freeway these days? Work continues, yes. and um, I, hopefully we'll, the weather, we're not headed down a winter road quite yet. <laughs> right. It feels like it this afternoon, but hopefully we'll get back into some nice fall weather here, mm -hmm. and um, that construction work will continue through the fall. Um, those eastbound ramps um, off of Weaver onto 94 are closed now, so um, if you've come through that area, you know that tra traffic's been real difficult on Weaver, so if you can avoid that intersection at all I think um, for the best and um, I know they are working on that they had that right lane closed and so they're working on those entry points and I think that's going to be done in the next week or so but those ramps will remain closed um, through right. probably early October all right be careful out there Moving ahead on the agenda, you had an update about goals for the city, and yeah. I understand some revising had to be done. <laughs> I can't imagine why related to COVID and all we've seen. Tell us a little bit about that look into the goals. Yeah, so on February 29th, you know, right before all of this right. hit, um, the council and staff met in a planning session um, uh, to kind of talk about where we were headed for the next 
you know, two years looking ahead 2020 to 2022 um, to recast those goals. And so um, many of the things we talked about that day, it's interesting how my how times <laughs> right. have changed a bit, but some of the things still remain relevant. And so um, we had revisited this in recent weeks with the council on August 3rd. And so we wanted to just kind of bring this back around and get this adopted. We put a work plan together behind this. So mm -hmm. we wanted to get the council's blessing to continue to move forward on that. Some of these things we have already moved forward on, but um, the issues were um, studying the market for additional fam multifamily units, including senior affordable housing and workforce offerings. As you know, we have a moratorium in place mm -hmm. on apartments, um, as well as um, we've initiated a housing study. So work on that one is in progress. Uh, address parks and recreation staffing needs. Of course, we just talked about the revenue issues on that side mm -hmm. and, and the reduced activity. So some of that is being impacted. Staffing is being impacted by that as well. But right. we'll continue to look at that throughout the year ahead or the couple, next couple of years. And then, of course, we have the community center master plan. And mm -hmm. that project has been kind of put on hold indefinitely. Um, we, we're not not sure when lifetime will get back in a growth mode and um, when we're going to be ready to think about um, expansion renovation of that facility. Okay. Um, mitigating traffic and congestion concerns so we have a number of things we're looking at um, just to deal with traffic and congestion around town and then ensuring staffing competitiveness. Um, I think we'll look at this issue but certainly times have changed you know back at the time in February we were you know coming out of the holiday season we were at you know a sub two percent unemployment rate and so yeah. now with unemployment where it stands today it's kind of a different world but um, I think we always need to meet making sure we're keeping our edge in Maple Grove so good to have the council's adoption of these mm -hmm. and, and we'll get to work on the work plan all right final updates from you at the meeting on the 8th a little bit about the special session mm -hmm. looking down towards the Capitol what is the latest there yeah so I just saw before I came in to do the show today that the governor will call a special session for um, this Friday, September 11th. I think it looks like it's going to be a one day session okay. and it sounds like they aren't going to be taking up the bonding bill like we had hoped they would. Um, that could happen later in September, early October. We really hope that um, they don't put it off until after the first of the year, but we'll continue to monitor that situation. Um, we've got interviews for finance director position mm -hmm. on Monday, September 14th. We've got two candidates there, so that'll likely be coming before the council in October for an appointment and then of course we started mentioned earlier we start absentee voting September 18th um, at the government center and um, we do um, we are going to be having um, we're going to be borrowing a trailer from the fire department that's Great. got a little built-in office in it um, to provide a space for people to drop off their absentee ballots if they don't want to mail them and they don't uh, want to come into the government center mm -hmm. building there'll be an opportunity to do that outside we'll have some election staff out there um, to be able to accept those those. There's a little process associated Very with nice. that. So um, people can still come into the building, of course, always welcome to do that mm -hmm. and drop them off with absentee staff there in the, the council chambers. But this will provide an opportunity outside the building. The city will have its own drive through we will. outside in the parking lot. We so will. take advantage of that if you would like. Final action of the night on September 8th was an EDA meeting. Again, this is something that happens on a regular basis, yes. on a yearly basis related to the levy. Yeah, so every year we go through the process of, um, and earlier in the evening on the consent agenda was to set our preliminary levy for the general fund and for um, that budget. Mm -hmm. um, so this was following up with the EDA to set that EDA levy. Uh, on an annual basis, we levy about $150,000 um, through the EDA and that supports our um, various housing programs. Um, so consistent with past years and um, supports our housing programs. All right, so that wraps up the recap of the meeting from the 8th. The next meeting is on the 21st. We'll give you that information in just a little bit, but let's hop to what else is happening around the city. And mm -hmm. one of the items, you've got it right there on the do. desk. The next newsletter is out. Yeah, fall newsletter should be in your homes. Nice. Um, fall foil, uh, trees on the, the cover and lots of election information included sure. in here. So make sure you take a read through the newsletter that should be on your kitchen table. Very good. Another item I'd pass along is Hennepin County helping out with some emergency housing help. Tell yes. us a little bit about that program. Yeah, so um, Hennepin County has a program for those who've lost income due to COVID-19 and may be able to receive emergency housing help from Hennepin County. Um, it's in the form of funding, so funding can cover current and past due costs such as rent, mortgage payments, and utilities. If you go to the Hennepin County website um, under housing help, you can uh, apply there. And we just really encourage people um, to reach out. There's money available, and I think the whole goal is to, you know, try to keep people stable in their housing during the this time of the COVID pandemic. 
Another item we've talked about multiple times was National Night Out. Obviously, usually happens early in August. That right. was changed to October. Now we have another little bit of a change. It's still going to happen, still encouraging residents to get involved, but a little change from the city end. Yeah, so we won't be hosting the community gathering in, at the community center during the day as we normally do during mm -hmm. the summertime. But um, if residents' neighborhoods are still wanting to get together in an outdoor um, event, um, we ask that they register their block party. We're going to be cataloging those and then they do receive a care package from the police um, from police fire public works um, uh, to help with their planning and, and their their neighborhood celebration so you can re register for national night out your party on our website very good that uh, direct address maplegrovemn.gov slash n n o to find out more Citizens Police Academy, great mm -hmm. opportunity for people to learn a lot about the city. Tell us how this program works. Yeah, we are proceeding with this um, this year for the 2020 Academy. Usually we'd have a, a large group. We're kind of limiting the class size mm -hmm. this year um, and then so we can deal with the space that we have to do that. So the classes meet on Tuesday evenings um, from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. Um, from September 29th through December 15th. The application deadline is September 15th and the application is available on the police department um, website site page. Very good. Community center pools. Let's give an update there as the weather changes a little bit. Usually action starts to happen at the pool. Tell yep. us what is coming up. Yeah, so the outdoor pool is closed for the season. Um, we do have a pretty significant mechanical project that we had planned for this fall when we were doing the shutdown. We kind of took care of a lot of the maintenance mm -hmm. um, earlier when the pools were shut down um, due to the governor's order, but we are going to get after that um, pool heater project here. So the pool, um, indoor pools will reopen in early October, October 5th, and we'll have that new heater in place. All right, we talked earlier about park and rec and some of the fun ways they're trying to keep people active. Here's a new one, Rugrats, Rods, and Reels. What is this? Yeah, so Park and Rec is teaming up with Cruising Outdoors for a free fishing event at Weaver Lake Park. This is Sunday, September 13th from 11.30 to 3. Kids are invited to come with a parent or adult to learn about how to fish and enjoy some outdoor fun. Um, there's a limited number of poles available for kids to use and keep that day as well. So little fun at Weaver Park. We really And after Park. you've completed your fishing adventure in the city, <laughs> how about a drive-in movie? You have that to offer as well. Yeah, so the next drive-in movie um, on Friday, September 25th on the big screen, and these are out in the, the, the kind of the fields out in front of Lifetime Fitness mm -hmm. there. Um, the movie is going to be Big Hero 6. Uh, in uh, Admission is $20 per car, and then you can um, get tickets that which are available online um, if you go to the Park and Rec website. Great. Great opportunity. Let's talk about Chalk Fest again. Had to change up a little bit as most yeah. things have this year. Tell us how things went. Yeah, it was really fun. They did it more kind of over in the town green area and they did a lot of um, Facebook Live elements mm -hmm. to this event so you could watch things online. Um, and so I, the the pieces that they did on the cha on the sidewalks are, are gone now because yep. we've had some weather uh, come right. through the area um, now and again. But um, we just uh, want to remind folks that the murals are still up around Good. town and they'll be up um, through the end of September. There's 12 locations in the Arbor Lakes area, including we have one at the corner of the Government Center and then there's one at Central Park. Um, if you go to chalkfestarborlakes.com, you can get a map of where all those murals are located. And I've seen some fun, you know, folks out taking selfies by those oh, yes. and whatnot. So yes. they're a nice addition to town. Perfect opportunity for that. Well, the city of Maple Grove are always interested in keeping neighbors and residents informed, and you have a new way to do that, mm -hmm. or a continued way to yeah. do that through Neighborhood Information App. How does this work? Yeah, so this is an interactive web map application um, that's available on the city website. In, um, you can find information about either if you're looking at a property, you know, a house that might be for sale and you're mm -hmm. looking at that neighborhood. Um, it includes information about zoning, public safety, elections, recycling, recreation, utilities, just kind of all the things you might want to know about a property. Um, if you live there, you're new to the community or thinking about moving in. And we'll give you the city's website again at the end of the program. A lot of information there. Stop Food Waste Challenge, a challenge mm -hmm. out to residents of Maple Grove. What is this going to be? So Hennepin County has implemented a new Stop Food Waste Challenge. It offers residents a variety of actions to reduce food waste, such as um, creating and following a meal plan. I feel like I'm doing that every day of my life right now <laughs> at my house. Um, keeping track of and using up food that's purchased and learning how to properly store food. The program is uh, free online, runs September 
14th through October 11th, and you can find more information out about that on the Hennepin County website. And we end today's show with a place to find great food in the city <laughs> of Maple Grove. That is the Farmer's Market. It continues <clears> on. Yeah, and I just saw Chief Bush's uh, weather prediction for Thursday afternoon. He always provides, he's a meteorologist right. by oh, trade. Very good. Yeah, and so he always <laughs> provides us a little weather forecast for um, that Thursday afternoon, and so it's looking good okay. for Thursday. A little Excellent. bit warmer and drier, so good. that's good. Uh, market's still there. We have a lot of the fall things as apple squash, beautiful mums, all those kinds of things are available in the market. We'll be there from on, continue on Thursdays from 3 to 7 p.m. and then in October the hours brief up from 3 to 6 so and make it, sure you make stop by. Yes and as always in the Maple Grove Community Center parking lot. That is all the information for today. Heidi thank you very much for being with us and thank passing you. along the updates. Let's leave you with the next council meeting date and also is the city's website maplegrovemn.gov great place to find out all that's happening in the city and again a lot of information we pass along today is right there on the website for you to take a look at the next meeting as we mentioned monday september 21st 730 at the government center and phone number at the bottom of the screen for heidi nelson i'm babe kaiser thanks for joining us